just me and my guitar Hey, what's happening guys? Mark back here from Mark's Aquatics. We're in the shrimp room today and we're going to be doing a water change on the systems here. Um, this system in particular here is about, it's, well it is 200 litres, this one. It's, um, it's 24 by 24 by 12. And um, they say 200 litre tank. So we're going to take out a good little 10% of that today. I'd say, I'd say a good 25 litres, something like that. Which we've got a big bucket here. We normally use my, one of my old salt tubs. One of these old salt tubs. This is one of the old ones just to get rid of the old water out of there. And clean anything out that we need to clean out. What I'm going to do is, when I normally do a water change, I'll have a good look around and I'll remove anything, like all the Indian almond leaf skeletons, I'll remove those, any loose bits of moss that's come off, just clear the base and tidy up things, and I just generally move things around, so um, any debris that's built up under things, the shrimps can get to, clean that up as well and so no little gas pockets are forming underneath the substrate because that can happen with decay you do get the gas build up and it will um and it can be a bit toxic to your shrimps if that starts bubbling out but we're pretty good on our routines here once a month i move everything around slightly just hoover up any rubbish out of there with a bit of hose pipe and uh, clean it all out so what i'm going to do is just going to take everything out now move things around it's quite small in this room, so it's going to be a bit of a, a bit of a squeeze. I've got you set up on my big tripod today, so if you can get it up and above the tank and look down, and uh, you might be able to see a bit better. Now, what I've got here is a ball valve system. If you've watched some of my other videos, you've probably seen me talk about these. I've got them on each tank, and um, they're brilliant. They really are good. They they replace them any evaporation, which is you're losing water all the time. Water's evaporating into the atmosphere constantly into a tank, into your house and it's got to be replaced so with this fit, fitted to my RO system through here that runs right through into the workshop where my RO unit is if you've seen that in there and that's piped straight through now that ball cock there will keep that at that level 100% of the time in both tanks both ball cocks they, as soon as they raise up you listen now and then it stops same with this one And that stops as well because it's raised up that float will right rise up and shut that little there's a little piston inside with a little valve and it pushes it in and stops the water coming through so as a drop of evaporation leaks away from there and evaporates away that will drop a fraction and it will replace a drop of water back in there so it is absolutely constant water parameters are they're constantly the same and that is imperative in shrimp systems which I've found I mean I've had these set up now for about I would say six months it's really since I started this channel about six months ago when this was all corals I was breeding corals in here and I decided that I was going to change over and do shrimp because I'd been keeping shrimp for about a year prior to that in some other tanks which I've got upstairs and I thought I'd just make this into a shrimp room and concentrate on these guys and breed some out and I originally ordered, I think it was 10 F1s, 10 Crystal Blacks, 10 Crystal Reds. So I had a total of 30 shrimps. And I bought some yellow Sakuras from my local fish shop. And since in six months, they have just gone prolifically mad and breeding everywhere, as you can see. Um, and you'll see when I stir up the tank a bit, how many actually do come out. There's probably three to 400 Crystal Blacks in this tank here, believe it or not. There's babies everywhere in there, up in the tree at the top there, you can see them all in the top there, skimming off the top, they turn upside down and they skim off the top of the water with their little legs like that, which is quite fun to watch. Um, and they love the, uh, the lettuce as well, that water lettuce. They love going on the roots and cleaning up on that, and I've got that in all the, in all the tanks here. But I think that's what we're going to do, we're going to move things around. I filled the oxidators up yesterday and I cleaned the filters out yesterday, so we haven't got to do that today. Right, I've got the old trusty bit of hose pipe here, which I use just for this job and this job only. So what we do is we put it in the water like that, as we know, quick suck on that. And out it comes into the bucket. Watching, obviously, all the time that no shrimps get near it, they're going to go straight up the pipe. And you don't want that. So I'm going to take out half a bucket. This is all I do once a month. 
We'll go into the shed in a minute and we'll remineralize some uh, of the new RO water and get that up to speed before we put it back in. 20 litre change in each tank. That's what we're going to be doing. And we'll be remineralizing that water to the same, obviously, the same TDS what is in there. This is just the way I do things, guys. Like I say, other people may do different things, but this is how I do it. And um, I say I don't get any shrimp deaths whatsoever, and they breed like crazy. So something's working. So if something's working, like I say, if it works, don't play around with it. Keep it as is. Because I find what happens with a lot of people, people that have got in touch with me over time, they say, oh, my, you know, my pH is this, my pH is that. I've got this problem with cage, I've got this problem. The thing with any tank is stability. And if you can keep, st keep stability like that, you're not going to go wrong. The trouble is you're doing big water changes all the time. You think, oh, no, some people think it's religious. They have to do it once a week or change X amount of percentage once a week or once every two weeks. And all that's doing is fluctuating your pH up and down, up and down all the time because you're not keeping an eye on the pH. And obviously you're adding harder water back to it. And you're going to get these spikes and you're going to get these changes. These fluctuations are going to go up and down. And that's when you get into trouble and the shrimp don't like it because they like that stability. And that is, that is the key with shrimp keeping, I'm telling you now, is stability. It really is. Right, what I'm going to do is now I'm going to take out, I'm not going to take anything out, I'm just going to move things around. So, when you do this kind of thing, guys, be gentle as you can. Because you don't want to start bumping them on the head. Move their little feeder bowl over there. put the oxidator in there I think for the time being and a little almond leaf I like to feed on almond leaves as well just just to uh, put that to one side you'll find your shrimps if you've got a lot in your systems like me they'll end up all over your hands and they'll be everywhere so stuff like this little bits of moss Which have attached themselves to uh, to a bit of the media like that what I'll do is I'll just put that down in, in the end of the tank down below where well, it's got another little light down there on top of those and that will start growing so that's just going to give me some some more bits to play around with to do other hobbies with uh, so, so sorry some other projects with later on Got some subwazatang there which is decided to grab hold of those older cones and start growing on that so we're going to leave that for some to grow out and like I was saying I just move things around Still a bit of life left on those. Not masses, but what I'll do is I've got the Amano shrimps down in the tank with the endlers down below, so I'll put that in there with them, and they'll finish off those. And there's also bits of uh, moss and sub wires hanging onto that, so that's going to start growing down there as well. I like to keep the main chunks where they are. And as you can see, that hide that we made, I don't know if you can see that on there guys, but the root system that's come off of that now is massive. And they've really, they've really have grown a lot, you see, since we did them. All these new roots coming out. And you can propagate these now, you can cut these off and make all new cuttings for, for different projects. But that's really nice now, it's really coming, coming together nice. So we can pop that back down there, in that corner. As you can see the shrimps are all starting to come out now, there's quite a few uh, coming out. 
loads more at the back and around the sides as well. I'll just take out the hide, the old moss hide. Excuse me, mate. I just normally lift it up a couple of times through the water like that because they hide in the tubes and they and they pop out. Well, that's that's coming on beautiful now. That's really really thickened up. You see from that cutting that we've been doing, that short, just nipping everything off all the time. And while it's out, I think I'll uh, I'll give it a quick trim. I think. Just chop it around the the opening so we can see the little guys going in and out and all the bits that are dropping off are going straight into my uh, into my bucket down there with the RO sorry not with the RO with the water that we've just taken out so I'm just going to nip all the way over this taking all the literally just the tips And like I said before, that will encourage more growth. And it will come back thicker and nicer. And all these little bits then I'll collect up and I'll put them down in the end of the tank and they They'll just keep growing out then, so we've got uh, some more future moss for little projects that we get up to. There you go, it's looking nicer now. We've got a nice little thatch roof going on there now. So you can see all the way through it. You can see a few little snails through there. Look. But that's working well. And that glue we all put in there, we held it all together, still lovely now. So what I'll do is I'll just give that a little shake around in that in the bucket of water. Always checking your water afterwards guys as well because you get the baby shrimps will get in amongst this. They'll be alright for a couple of minutes out of the water like they just have been, but you might get a couple that'll uh I'm just gonna put that there a minute. Sorry if my head's in the way. But I'm just picking up a few little bits off the uh, off the floor, and that's the good thing. Is you get lots of little bits like that. Now you could coat anything with that. Even some of those little branches that I've got in there. You can put some around there and you can make some new little ornaments in there and do lots of little handy, handy little things. put you see it already you see the, the shrimps are all over that all over this hide because we've been playing around with it and then what I do is I get a little net a little tiny fine net that one there and I just go around the base and I just lightly shoo the shrimps out the way first and then just tap on the base and that'll just tosses up all the little bits off the bottom got some old older cones in there
Always being careful, obviously, guys, with your shrimps to keep an eye on them because you don't want to be scooping them out. Especially when you get to this stage when you've got quite a few in there. Right, what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to have a good old clean up now. You know the what I'm going to do. So what I just said, I'm just going to go around now like this. I'm going to pick out all the loose stuff from all around the tank. But I'm going to literally have to get in front now because it's quite far and I can't reach the back from here and show you at the same time because it's not massive in here. So I'm going to do that and then once it's done, I can set you up then at a different angle and we'll we'll do a brief clean out of the other system as well. And then we'll start remineralizing some water in the shed. And we'll fill it all up again and finish off with a bit of food, I think. Right, guys, we've done this system now. We've taken everything out that we needed to take out. All the debris and stuff that I wanted to remove. We've taken out a good 10% of the water. And we're going to do the same. So I'll just go up a bit there. And you can see the, the level of the water there. I'll just move that magnet out of the way. The old glass cleaner and I'm going to drop that down you see the same level there so we're going to take that much out which is about 20 litres in total this is a four foot tank sorry about the glare but it's it's not very good this tank for uh, and this is the crystal red tank and you can see loads and loads of little sakuras in there yellow sakuras as well still all over the filters they're all growing out as they're getting bigger I'm slowly taking them out and dripping them into the uh, into the aquascape in the living room but at the moment they're quite small still so I'm just leaving them everyone seems happy so we'll see how we get on right I'm gonna stop you again now you can see what the tanks like down there I'm not going to be able to get in there really and and show you at the same time but all these all this loose moss and things around the corner here some of the logs we're gonna lift all that off just clear everything out underneath wash it around a bit leave it for a couple of hours, let those filters suck in what um, what we've blown up in the tank and disturbed and then we'll, the last thing will be to sponge filter, squeeze them out, do the clean and um, and then we'll get back up to speed and we'll let them clear up and then we'll have a look at them I think. Right guys we're back in the workshop, coffee time and we're going to uh, remineralize this water. Now it's just straight RO water in there now which is from my RO unit, which you can see there. That's how slow it comes out. It's taken about an hour and a half, two hours to fill that bucket up. Probably longer than that actually. Comes out very slow. Comes out at absolutely zero TDS. No dissolved solids in there whatsoever. So, what we've got to do is now, for you guys that don't know, is we've got to remineralize this water. Because we've taken all the minerals out, there is nothing in this water now whatsoever. Um, it's completely clear of minerals, it's basically just water in there, okay? So we've got no minerals in there at all. So what we've got to do now, because we've taken all the minerals out and we've taken all the impurities out from the mains tap water, the chloramines, chlorines, stuff of that nature, all the nasty stuff we don't want in our shrimp tanks, We've literally stripped everything out. Now we've got to put it back. Now what I use, which is called Aquadur, and I tend to use that. It's really good stuff. It's, uh, it says for all reverse osmosis water, it creates the ideal parameters found in uh, your native water and your, uh, in your fear of fish. Increases your GH and KH and stabilizes your pH according to the specific needs of your fish. So it says here, and I found it really helpful stuff. Doesn't take much now, it's one scoop, I'll show you it now. This one it comes in a powder form, like that. And you get that little scoop in there as well. Oh, I didn't press play then, sorry about that guys, but I just tipped it in there and I've stirred it up now with the heater. This heater I've got in here is 
is an Arcadia one. They're fantastic stainless steel heaters. Uh, now I just use that and I'll just put that in there. It's about, I think it's 300 watts. So I'll take it, it'll take about, I mean the temperature in there now is, is 18, 18 degrees in there so far with the old uh, laser thermometer, which are brilliant. If you've not seen them before, you want to go and get yourself one. Fantastic, really accurate. So we're going to wait till that gets up to about 22 degrees and when that's 22 degrees I'll get back to you and that will give that time to disperse in there as well the aqua dirt and it because it's mixed in I'll just use the heater and give it a quick stir up like that and then that will slowly slowly sink in it'll It'll dissolve nicely, all the minerals dissolve back into the water and then we should have a TDS of what we want. I'll just check it now. As you can see, at zero, um, we're 18 degrees in the workshop at the moment. And as you saw that water was 18 degrees, at the moment we are 146 at 18 degrees. I tend to keep my uh, my TDS at 150, and we know that uh, the crystal reds and the crystal blacks like TDS of 100 to 180, and a pH of about 6.1 to 6.5, KH to uh, 0 0.2, and the GH at about 4 to 6. That's what I normally keep them in. At the, in the shrimp room which they're all happy at so now that's got up to 19 degrees we're gonna to have to let that get up a couple of more degrees and then we'll go and put the water in now a lot of people drip this back in slowly I, I haven't done that I, I, I when I acclimate shrimps to, to first go in when they're not my shrimps I'll drip them in very very carefully over a period of hours to really really slowly acclimatize them because you never know what conditions they've come from and where they're kept and um, so what I do is I drip them in very carefully this I do is I drip them in very carefully there's videos on on the site on the uh, on I've got videos on here that show you how to uh, drip acclimate shrimp and do it right the proper way and um, but what we're going to do here is we're just going to take jugs full because when I, when you've got your shrimp to a certain way of doing things they get used to it like I said stability is really important with a shrimp tank and with those ball valves on there all that evaporation is replaced on a constant basis so those water parameters stay super stable and the pH stays nice and stable as well it's when you start taking bigger volumes of water out and then putting the water back in you're putting harder water back in your pH is going to fluctuate then and your pH is going to raise and that is what a lot of people, how a lot of people lose their shrimps because they're doing too big a water changes too frequently. And the people that I talk to online, and I say, well, keep your water changes down to say once a month, keep your filters clean. Do that if you, it depends how much, what bigger tank you've got. But if you've got a smallish tank, every couple of weeks, give your sponges a little pump out. And that'll get rid of anything in there which is creating any any build up in those sponges that are creating nitrate um, because that does happen in the, in the sponge filters and you don't want that your plants will feed off of that but the uh, the lower the better for you so stability is the key guys but what I do is when, once my shrimps like you see in there now they're very they're very stable they're used to the current the parameters that they're kept in it's a regular thing that I do every single month I do this what you're seeing now and that keeps everybody happy and you're not having those big fluctuations in your pH like you would do if you were doing reg more regular water changes all the time okay I keep that up with the almond leaves the bogwood that's in there the buffered substrate everything keeps the pH nice and um, but that's how I do it and I don't bother going and dripping it back in really really slowly I just fill it up in my jug and I'll jug the water in slowly and that it works for me fine I don't get any losses whatsoever that way I know some people may drip it in slowly over time it's, a, it's completely up to you how you want to do things or how other people do things that you've seen 
that's fair enough this works for me and I'm just telling you that what works for me and that's all I can do really is just pass on the information and the, the uh, knowledge that I'm picking up through uh, through keeping shrimp that's all but we'll just jug the water back in when it gets up a couple of more degrees this heater shouldn't take too long into uh, to do it as you can see we're at 19 point where we are 20.1 20 degrees already so another degree I'll leave that in there for five minutes I'll literally drink my coffee and then we'll uh, I'll go and pour this pour this into the tank right guys we are back in the shrimp room now and we've just set ourselves up again the water now that we've got in the bucket by me now TDS is 146. We've got 146 in there. So now we're just going to take some scoops of this out in my jug. It's all up to temperature as well. 22 degrees. I keep my systems at. And I'm just going to pour this in. Over the top. Don't dump the whole lot in quick, otherwise you're just going to stir up your substrate in the bottom, but just keep going around like that. And I have never had any trouble doing it this way before. As long as your TDS and your temperatures are the same, you're not going to get any trouble. Then you're putting a nice little bit of fresh life and minerals back into the water because your plants are using the minerals up as well and so a good old water change picks everything up your plants will grow better shrimp will be healthier so what I'll do is now I'm going to fill that up I'm going to put a, I won't take you through all the uh, the filling up of the tanks but I've got that tank there done now and we can pan around to that one and that's quite low as well so when they're both full up then we'll go through a couple of things and then we'll uh, we'll finish off we'll put a bit of food in the tank and give the shrimps a, a nice little bit of food and end on a good note now ah, there you go guys we're all done everything's cleaned up all the jobs are done put a bit of food in there always end on a good note with the shrimps I always do and as you can see they're tucking into some of that homemade food that we made recently I'll go and grab you that in a minute and um, after I've shown you the shrimps but they're tucking into that and really enjoying themselves we've got some lovely coloured shrimps in amongst this lot now we've got some super reds come out there and there's a few there with a, that are, you know a few of the shells are slightly opaque still but we're going to slowly take those out over time we're going to move them into other tanks and um, what I'm going to do is then I'll probably take out a lot of the ones from in here and we're going to put quite a few of them which aren't up to speed in the tank in the workshop so we can um, we can get those we can sell a few of them on and make a bit of money back for the hobby to buy some more bits and bobs maybe a few more little tanks here and there for the for the workshop because I've got pretty big plans for that workshop out there we're going to be taking down a couple of wall one wall the dividing wall between that and the the koi pond um, and I'm going to be building up the workbench right the way through to the pond so that's going to look really nice we're going to have a few more tanks in there and some various other bits and bobs which you can uh, catch up with as we go along but the crystals there are doing lovely all having a feed I'll just stop you now and we'll swing around on the tripod and I'll show you the crystal black tank and uh, you can have a look at those guys and there you go all cleaned up in there as well looking nice and clear now and um, everyone's happy I'll give you a pan out in a minute I'll just zoom back out so you can see the whole tank because I've got the light in there now under the tree it looks quite nice so you can see that as well but the shrimps are coming from far and wide now there's still I don't know how many there's I don't really couldn't tell you how many's in this tank now but it's it's in there it's probably in the, the hundreds I would have thought with them and the babies as well and um, and they're going crackers for that food we made I'll go and grab it now and I'll show you how that turned out. Here you go guys. Mark's Wild Leaf Shrimp Food. Made up my own little pot. That's what they turned out like. The little leaves as well. 
all gone off nice and solid I just drop a couple of them in there and they're away don't worry I'm not trying to sell you anything all right <laughs> I just like making things right I'm gonna put that away up there and now I want to have a little recap what we've done there guys we've uh, everything's happy now all fed watered all that sort of stuff and um, water change is done minimal disruption to the sinks and the systems just taking a 10% out and like I said before guys really don't do too big water changes on your systems take out only about 10% do it once a month make sure you've got the bog wood in there to stabilize your pH and your almond leaves your substrate your buffered substrate if you're keeping your caradina species and um, and that's going to bode you well it really will um, what else was I going to say yeah what I was going to say as well these are all this is just the way I do things guys all right like I said before in the video I know a lot of other guys do things differently um, different rates of putting water back in different ways of mixing it different products for mixing it in and all this carry on but like I've just said this is this is the way I do it and it works for me so if you replicate what I do it should work for you as well um, I've had no problems in this system whatsoever everything's prolifically breeding as you can tell you know when I first when we first put the video on I said that we were I bought 10 10 F ones um, 10 crystal blacks 10 crystal reds and then I had a few Sakuras from my tank upstairs and I bought a few more from my local fish store as well and um, and this is what we've got today you know within five or six months we've got no end of babies running around in here now in you know in that short space of time um, and with the F1s now we've got the blue bolts coming out we've got the um, King Kongs we've come out we've got the shadow pandas we've had some wine reds we've had some real real stunning little uh, shrimps appear in the system and it's a lot of professional work going on here got my daughters and her mates are over screaming and shouting upstairs I'm um, a bit of glare on the tank sorry guys you can see the reflection of the tripod in my old phone there which I'm videoing with you can see the tree at the back there that's come on lovely now it's looking really nice with that moss if you're unsure of that video and how I made the tree you can go back on one of the other videos on how to make them it's all there for you to watch lots of other videos how to make bonsai trees all the shrimp hides even this little chap down here which I carved the shrimp into the flower pot made a little flower pot hide I haven't made that video yet but if you want me to if you want to see me make that drop me a message in the comments below and um, if I get enough requests I'll, uh, I'll show you how I made it okay anyway guys I think that we're gonna wrap it up at that one Everyone seems to be doing well. Everything's trimmed up and pruned up now. Water change has been done. And I'm happy now it's all been done. So we can swing around now. I might have a last look at these little guys down here. There's more and more coming out now onto those leaves. Munching away. And everybody's happy. Nice little blue bolt there under that choil wood at the back. Anyway guys, as always, thanks for tuning in. Cheers for watching. I do appreciate it. My subs are, uh, we're nearly touching 800 now, which has absolutely stunned me. It really has that you guys are watching the videos and getting some lovely feedback from you guys as well. And I hope I'm helping you helping you all out in, um, if you're starting out or... Uh, need a bit of help just drop me a message in the comments below and I'm always here to help anybody out who's got any problems whether it be to do with the shrimps or with fish tropical fish marine fish corals anything like that I'm always here just drop me a message and I'll help you out as best as I can okay anyway guys as always you're all stars love you all thanks for subscribing thanks for watching and I'll see you all on the next episode of Marks Aquatics be safe bye for now Me and my guitar